so excretion in the skin so how does screen uh, does the skin facilitate the process of excretion so first of all let's look at the skin so you see that the skin is the largest external organ of the body so don't say that the skin is the largest okay you can say that the skin is the largest organ but the best thing to say is that the skin is the largest external organ of the body because internally we have the the liver the liver is the largest internal organ of the body while the skin is the largest external organ of the body but all in all the skin is still the largest uh, organ of the body because outside here we have the skin and also inside the body we have also another layer of the skin so for the skin you see that this is an organ which mainly covers the whole body of the uh, of the animal However, it is the largest, it is the largest organ of the body because the skin is found to the outside of the body and also to the inside of the body before now we start having the organs. So also to the inside of the body we have the skin. So for the skin, as you can see, the skin is divided into three main parts. So in primary school we studied that um, the skin is made up of two parts. So in primary school we saw that the skin is made up of epidermis and the dermis only. But now, in high school, we see that the skin is now divided into three main parts. So the first one is the epidermis, which is found to the external part. After that, we have the dermis, which is the middle part and the thick part of the skin. After the dermis, we now have the subcutaneous fat layer. So the subcutaneous fat layer, this is a layer of the skin, which is now found beneath the dermis, as you can look at the diagram. So we have the epidermis to the outside, we have the dermis to the middle part, the subcutaneous fat, which is now the layer found beneath the dermis, the subcutaneous fat. So now apart from that, let's look at the next subtopic under the skin, and the subtopic is structure and function of the mammalian skin. So what are the structures and functions of the mammalian skin? So you see that the main functions of the skin yeah, so the main functions of the skin are, so the first one is storage of fats. So these excess fat, they are stored in the subcutaneous fat layer. So that is the first function of the skin, storage of fats. So these fats, during starvation or when someone is feeling hungry, so these fats are going to be broken down. They are going to be oxidized and broken down to form glucose after formation of glucose so this glucose is going to give the body its energy like for example if we have a thin person and if we have a very fat person we take these two people and dump them in a in a very large desert maybe for about some few days so it will take only maybe one week for the thin person to die to succumb to hunger so it will only take about one week for this thin person to die and it might take this fat person about one month or even two months for them to die. So if they are going to survive after two months, if we are going to look at them, so that fat person, we are going to realize that they have become very thin. So why did they become very thin? This point, uh, the first point that you have said. So they are going to become very thin because of the skin acts as storage of fat, uh, a medium for storage of fats. So this is what happened. That fat which is stored under the skin, it acts as an energy reserve for the future. So when this person is feeling hungry, so the body is going to burn the fats in the skin. So after burning the fat in the skin, it is going to produce energy. After producing energy, it's going to give the cells of the body energy so as to continue the normal metabolic processes as usual. So for this thin person, since they are thin, they don't have... Uh, too much fat in their body. So since they don't have too much fat, it will mean that they don't have energy, much of energy reserve. So if they have been placed in a desert environment and then they lack food, so the, the less fat that uh, were deposited on the body will then be used to break down uh, or rather will then be used to, to be broken down to give the body energy. But since they are thin, they don't have too much fat. So it's very easy for them to succumb to hunger. But this, the other person, since they are very fat, that means that they have a very high amount of energy reserve. So if they are feeling hungry, the body will use that stored energy in form of fat to give them energy and they can survive for a very long time. But the next time we are going to look at them, if they have not been eating, we are going to realize that they have become thin. 
This is a reason because the body has been using the stored fat to give them energy. So apart from that, the other function of the skin is that the skin serves as a protection, a protection medium for all the underlying tissues and the cells of the body. That's the other function of skin. Protection medium for all the underlying tissues and cells of the body. Because here we have the skins. Inside the skin, we now have the different organs, the different tissues, the different cells. So if I scratch myself, I'm not scratching the organs. I'm scratching the skin. So it serves as a protection medium for all the underlying tissues of the body. So apart from that, we see that the skin also regulates the body temperature. Whereby if someone is feeling cold, if someone is feeling cold, what's going to happen is that uh, the skin is going to erect the hairs, or the hairs on the skin, like that. So the hairs on the skin are going to erect. So as soon as the hairs of the skin have become erect, what's going to happen is that warm air is going to be trapped between the warm airs on the skin. If warm air is trapped between the, the hairs of the skin, if that cold temperature or that cold uh, wind tries to come to be in contact with the skin, it will already get a layer of warm air on top of the skin. So this warm air is going to prevent the cold air from interacting with the skin, thereby keeping the body warm. And also, if the temperatures are uh, very high, so the temperature, the weather is very hot. So what's going to happen is that the skin in the hair are going to lie flat on the, on the skin. So the hairs of the skin, the hairs of the skin are going to lie very flat. After lying very flat, the skin is going to produce sweat. So as soon as that sweat is deposited on the surface of the skin, the cold air, if, if cold air passes on the surface of the skin, it's going to bring a cooling effect. By that, we'll say that the skin also acts as a thermoregulator. Thermoregulator means that it regulates the body temperature when one is feeling hot or when one is feeling cold. So it readily regulates the body temperature. So apart from that, we see that the skin also excretes excess salt, water, and urea. Because there are some people, uh, or rather, if you have, uh, maybe if you are running, then suddenly you sweated. So after sweating, uh, like when you tasted your sweat, you could feel that the sweat is tasting salt. Uh, salt, which is sodium chloride. So by that, you can say that the skin was able to excrete excess salt. Don't say the skin excretes salt. You're going to get it wrong. The skin does not ex excrete salt. The skin ex excretes excess salt. So that word excess is very much important. You must include the word excess salt uh, in your explanation. Also, don't just say water. You must say the skin excretes excess water. Because what if the skin excretes water from the body? You will remain dehydrated. You will die. And that's why we must only say the skin excretes excess. So the ones that are not required, excess water is the one which is being excreted. So apart from uh, sweat testing salt, there are these people, after maybe they have sweated, if you, if you smell their sweat, their sweat smells kind of urine. It's a very strong pungent smell. So their sweat smells some very strong pungent smell. That very strong pungent smell is as a result of urea. This is genetic. There are people who their sweat smells very pungently. There are people who their sweat smells urine, the normal urine, which is urea. And there are people who their sweat doesn't even smell by the There are people who their sweat has a very mild smell or at all it doesn't have a smell. So basically, in this point, you can say that this, uh, the skin uh, excretes excess salt, excess water, and urea. So that's the other function of the skin. Apart from that, the skin also, the other function is that the skin, the skin also serves as uh, a medium for reception of stimuli, be it temperature, be it pain, be it pleasure. So the skin also serves as a medium for reception of stimuli. If I touch you, you're going to feel that I have touched this place of the body and not this place. If you are feeling cold, uh, it's the skin which detects the coldness. So in Form 4, in the topic of reception, response, and coordination, we are going to see how pain, pleasure, and temperature are detected by the skin and then taken to the brain. The signal is taken to the brain, and then the brain coordinates the arms and the legs in order to act accordingly uh, to the temperature, the pr uh, pressure, or either the pain that that person is feeling. 
So for this point, we'll say that the skin acts as a medium for reception of the different stimuli in the body. As well, the skin uh, serves as a medium for synthesis of vitamin D. So synthesis of vitamin D also takes place in the skin, whereby if you go outside where, when it's sunny, then you, you bask on the sun, so the skin is going to receive that vitamin D from the sun. It's going to receive, it's going to process it, and then the vitamin D is also going to help uh, in the strong formation of bones, in the strong formation of this and, and that in the body, etc., etc. So those are among the functions of the skin that, uh, that we have, among others. There are other different functions of the skin, so these are only six. So we have other functions or other different functions of the skin that have not been listed here.